Hey there, guys, and welcome back to episode 138 of the Anchovy Podcast, where we discuss anything related to the Second Amendment, including firearms, gear, and current events. I'm your host, Jacob Clifford, Jerome my co-host, Jerry Mitchell. And uh, today we're going to be talking about go-to nylon gear companies. Um, basically, yeah, just um, different different companies that uh, make nylon gear that we would suggest, and we'll, we'll go through that here in a few. Um, starting off with personal news, you got anything? Yeah, finally put my uh, my long distance AR-15 build together. <laughs> oh, that was such a such a work, like, so much more work than it should have been. But like, yeah, everything so came in and it was broke. Or well, yeah, like a couple of things from like reputable manufacturers. So I touched on it in the last podcast. So I had issues with somehow in the install process, an issue with the Sons of Liberty Gunworks barrel nut. They were super good, and I think I messaged. I'm trying to think when I. Within a few days, they sent me a replacement barrel nut, so that was great. Uh, the bolt carrier, I'm still sorting out with Black River Tactical. Um, from my uh, observations, it's too tight of a tolerance, so it wouldn't fit on go gauges or a live ram without excessive force, which is not what you want to do. No. Like, it's the whole like forward assist kind of argument. Like, if you've got to force it in there, it probably shouldn't be in there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but either way, that it comes together. And then I, I assembled it to the point the barrel nut was on, didn't realize it was twisted, put the gas system on, locked tight of the gas system, then realized the rail wouldn't go on because the barrel nut was twisted, so then I had to take the gas system off. And I was talking to Jake about that, but I ended up having to take a torch to it and yeah. heat it right up and hammer in a, a Torx bit just to get that uh, that uh, fastener, the gas, gas block. What do you call that? Gas block screw, screw I guess. You should consider it a screw or a bolt. Yeah. I think it's a screw. More of a screw. Yeah. But eventually we got that out. Now that's all in one piece. So. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. So far I'm enjoying it uh, with the can for my build. It's a little little excessive, but I mean, it's also, it's a, it's a special purpose rifle. It's true. It's not supposed to be a do it all. It's not supposed to be close quarters or any of that kind of stuff. So. Nope. Yeah. I like it. It has a cool vibe to it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, for personal news, I don't think I have too much going on. Um, yeah, really nothing, to be honest with you. Um, oh, uh, I finally, finally mailed back the uh, Magwell to Edgar Sherman. So, sorry it took me eight years, guys. But, sorry, Tom. Yeah, you know, you're, you're a total bro. All right, I want you to know that. And no, it's not you, it's me. Um, <laughs> I'm always busy, and it was in my pickup truck and my console for like eight years, and I didn't realize that once the shipping labels printed out, you didn't have to go into the post office. Just for the record, I did get Jake the label like weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, he <laughs> did. And so like, I was under the impression, and I'm not very ship savvy. I go to the post office once every 17 years. And so like, I basically was under the impression, I'm like, fuck, all right, I got I to gotta get them while they're open. I got to run in there, and I got to ship it. So, that was my understanding. And, uh, well, I just need to put it in the blue box this entire time. And yeah. I learned that <clears throat> last night. And so, this morning, I shipped it out. You know what's um, strange? The uh, blue boxes in town, they no longer accept, like, package mail. It's only envelopes. Really? Cause yeah. I, like, the ones that aren't at the post office? No, the ones in front of the post office. Oh, because I you tossed how, it in there. Which one? One on the right. The blue box. Which Which one in town? No, they real. Oh, so they do fit. I guess. Oh, okay. I hope so. Because I maybe maybe it's the Woodsville one. I well, suppose if you guys don't get it, it's because apparently. I mean, okay, like to be it'll, fair, it'll be, it'll be fine. To be fair, I had to work at like two in the morning, and so it was two in the morning. So I yeah. mean, you know, if she went, she went. If she didn't, she didn't. You know. Um, but anyways, we have the number on it, so I mean, worst case, you go always look it up and see where it's at. But it's fair. But yeah. It's fair, but yeah. So that's uh that's something that's exciting. So I'm sure a lot it'll it'll come to me a lot sooner than I sent it to them, you know, because well, away she goes. But um, yeah, so we got that got that going. Um, and on to the uh, actual episode part, I suppose. Yeah. So uh, Jake and I were brainstorming, and and he came up with this one. Um, it's kind of one of those it's one of those like good situations, good but bad situations to be in. There's so many nylon gear companies on the market at the moment. Yeah, there is. And there's so many like different like tiers of them. 
Like you have a lot of like kind of I guess what you consider like the airsoft kind of community yeah. ones, um, which like will suffice. They're affordable, but they're garbage. Like, and some of those are some of them are hard to tell because they're knockoffs of other companies. Mm-hmm. So like, most notably, you have Condor, which there's actually a few things Condor makes that are actually like decent. I heard there half there's a handful of things that are like halfway decent nowadays. Yeah. They used to not be at all, but <clears throat> even then, it's something I'm not. I'm not. Going to endorse because I just genuinely don't know. Yeah, and most people are probably familiar with their like very dumb looking plate carriers and all that kind of like battle belts that are super big and all this stuff that just doesn't hold up with abuse. <clears throat> um, yeah. Like we've we've been there back in like the airsoft days running Condor stuff, and I mean when you're when you ha- when you're living off allowance money, it's not that bad. But yeah, when I mean, you're actually trying to buy something that lasts and yeah, works I'm- when you need it. Exactly, and so that's the thing is like you see a lot of people running that stuff, and you can just tell it doesn't it doesn't fit correctly. It doesn't, you know, it just um, it doesn't handle things like taking up um, taking the stress from like carrying actual plates, um, yeah. wear is... and tear, um, the adjustments not correct. It doesn't stay adjusted, or so on and so forth that you're going to find in a in a carrier like that versus um, like an actual quality one, you're going to notice that difference, yeah. and it's going to be better on your health if you're actually wearing it a lot, because um, there's a lot more, a lot more um, engineering put into it than to make something. To put it this way, like the lower echelons are trying to look like something of quality, and the higher echelon ones are actually trying to be a you know something of quality. Yeah, it's kind of like the end all be all of it. Yeah, like I mean, we we talked about it at length when we went to see the Edgar Sherman design team, but. When you really go, when you're a designer and you're really trying to work around the human body, there's a lot that goes into that. Versus, you're just trying to make something that fills a role. Like, yeah, it's got to fill the role, but it also has to work with the human body. Yeah, and so like, that's yeah. Like, this will probably piss a lot of people off, but like, I hate five eleven stuff. Like, oh yeah, I fucking hate five eleven stuff. There's people that like swear by their like their pants or their they make everything now. You can literally wear head to toe five eleven. Yeah, they. I, I feel like they've been cool since like the Miami Dade shooting in '86. Were like, they a thing back then? I don't even know, oh. but that was the last time they were cool if they were because like I just they've always just they're just been, a glimmer in somebody's eye. Yeah, they're they're like they're the 48 year old they're the 48 year old DEA agent. You know what I mean? Like that, that's what he wears. Yeah. Like who's well, that's the prime. thing. They're, it's huge in the cop world. Like everybody wears 511 polos and pants and shirts and boots and. Just their, their actual, like, load-bearing equipment is the farthest from actually bearing load. Yeah. And, and wearing any kind of, like, unless it's, like, a duty uniform, I guess. Which I get it. Like, they were, they're kind of, they kind of marketed their entire, um, I guess, demographic around, like, semi-duty apparel. Yeah. Which is fair, I guess. Like, which, it, it fills that role pretty fairly, I guess, for clothing and stuff. Um, especially back in its, like, prime, back in, like, 2010, 2011. But it's gear has been always kind of trash and like if you're wearing it and trying to be like low key (laughs) it's not working yeah don't think it is it's that i'm not a cop bro yeah like you're in literally a khaki button up with oddly side like oddly wide sides that like are velcro-y yeah you know so you can like draw quick or like the uh concealment undershirts yeah the concealment dude the 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 ones where you have to like open your shirt up and reach into your armpit and grab a push-up bra gun holster like (laughs) Where it's Jesus like, yeah, sitting man. right under your... Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, did under you get a tumor, Jeff? I, no, shh, I'm carrying, yeah. you know. Don't tell like, anyone. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> but um, there's there's numerous horrible brands, like we're men- mentioning, and we could continue to go down the list, but uh, there's there's uh, a number of high-quality brands, and a majority of what we're going to talk about is personal experience and stuff we've seen other reputable people either... Uh, promote or use themselves um so m- like 90 percent of this is going to be personal experience um but yeah to- so that being said like it's not all inclusive yeah as well you know like i believe we mentioned that prior but like because we are basing this mainly around like what our personal experiences are with them and we haven't thoroughly worked in or used um every company out there's equipment we've both only had you know what we've bought you know yeah which is so just take yeah which is limited at best so take that into consideration there are more out there 
And it's kind of those things if you know of it, it's probably like you if you know of it, you probably know if it's good or not. Like if you're within the industry and you're actually like have some self awareness about it, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, this might be for those that are either getting into it or yeah. need a little bit of guidance on this specific. Because yeah. some of these companies, they do specific things very well. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing is like, um, yeah, they either do like specific things very yeah. well or um, they're just genuinely a good place to start where you're going to be safe. If you if you step into kind of um, one of these companies like products, you're going to be safe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And so like you're, you're going to – so that's kind of – there's a lot of like kind of different French companies and whatnot, but yeah. Before we get into the actual like companies, though, I, I just wanted to reiterate we've we've touched on it before in our like chest rig and plate carry video. We touched about in a lot of our early episodes that were geared towards um, basics. We touched on it. The, the big thing is define what you actually need. Yeah. Um, don't just go out there and be like, oh, I want to buy everything from this top brand because it's like Gucci or it's like the best brand. And yeah. A lot, lot of people cool like clone running. build themselves out like a, like a kit. You know what I mean? Like they just kind of clone their way into Based having to, a kit. Well, that we saw that with Airsoft. Yeah. That's like the, the name Airsoft of the game. in a nutshell. Yep. Yeah. Oh, this tier one special operator, this Russian I mean, this, paratrooper. This and that, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And like yeah. a lot of guys do, I think in the gun world too, where they buy a bunch of nylon gear to look like somebody tactical and they don't actually don't really know. It's like having a tool chest full of tools and you have no idea how to use them. You yeah. know, it's like, you know, put shit on as you need it, you know? Yeah. So you have to do your best at defining what you need. So that's kind of like, do I need a plate carrier? Do I need a chest rig? We have an entire episode on that. So go watch that. And most of that's still relevant, if yeah. not if not all of it. Yeah. So if you guys need information on that, uh, we also have one on battle belts. So I'd go back and watch or listen to those. But make, like, actually define what you need, then figure out your price range, and then start looking at brands that other reputable people are running and then you can go from there and figure out, okay, there's a lot of research you can do and kind of learn through third hand about, okay, this company seems good. These features seem like what I need, but at the end of the day, it's really going to come down to, is this actually going to work through for me? And that's going to come down to personal use and experience. Yeah. So with all that being said, um, I guess um, we'll kind of start off with our, with our kind of number one. Um, contender here and i uh, might surprise a couple people because they've kind of uh they're still there and they're still going pretty strong but they've kind of fell out of like the the bougie spotlight a little bit yeah um they used to be the end all be all and i think they still are for what they produce and we'll get into this in a second and that's going to be cry precision um cry precision is a very straightforward company they've been in the game for a very long time compared to a lot of these other nylon gear companies that still exist and there was a time not long ago where if you wanted the best, it was like essentially like what it was like the Filson of like, you know, tactical apparel. Yeah. Like it was, you know, unfailing goods. And and it was a very, uh, yeah, I mean, and they still are. Um, it's still outstanding equipment. I haven't heard anything negative about, you know, what they're pumping out. I mean, good clothing, good equipment. Compared to a lot of other parts of the market, they actually have pretty reasonable pricing. More reasonable than they were. Now, they used yeah. to be a lot more expensive years ago, actually. So it's kind of funny how that's on the exact opposite. But um, um, you, you buy from Cry, you know. Um, I will say at least they used to not be very good at like explaining how some of the equipment worked together. Yeah. Um, but you can find all that out separately. But if you order it from Cry, chances are you're not going to have any problems with it. And that's the big thing is like you can get exactly what you need and nothing you don't need right from Cry call it good straight from them and be like, you know, set, which I think is fine now, like ordering through their site. But I know I, I bought my JPC oh, yes, I forgot back in that. 2020 and they had like a backlog. Like a it was like bastard. a six month, five to like six month, uh, yeah, backlog I forgot about that. on JPCs. So, um, yeah, I mean, uniforms, tops and bottoms, combat pants, field pants, all that kind of stuff. Cry is like, they're the number one. And I don't think most people would argue that. I don't think you can really find a, a better, like, uh, yeah, like combat apparel off the shelf, like combat apparel. Uh, they're still go to, they for, invented the combat pan, like did. the legit yeah. combat pan. And everybody else has been doing their best to try to like imitate yep. what cry has mastered, frankly. Yeah. And they're, uh, they're still, they're still like the number one for special operations, number one for SWAT teams. And, 
even even for guys like that are in pre- uh, into preparedness are buying cries like i mean we bought we bought m81 bottoms i bought the field pants you bought the combat pants yeah uh, i mean they they yeah. just last like you have gen 2s still kicking around mm-hmm. yeah like, yeah they hold up and uh, and that's the thing is i mean christ the guys invented multicam okay yeah like you know they, they they're did, on yeah. it like yeah. you know and they got fucked by the army uh, with the uh, by the like DOD in regards to yep. the multicam contract, but nonetheless, like these guys are the heart and soul of kind of like modern nylon gear, and they don't get enough recognition, in my opinion, for it. Yeah, like they really are. And it goes beyond uniforms. Their load bearing equipment is actually load bearing. I've heard amazing things about their chest rig. So they they have an air light chest rig. So it's essentially just a Molly chest rig, but the harness on it is it's got um, some elasticity to it. Mm-hmm. And some padding. Yeah. Apparently the harness, it's, they don't sell the harness separate, which is the unfortunate thing. But mm-hmm. apparently the harness on that chest rig is amazing. If you want a very modular chest rig, like even more modular than some of these other companies we're going to go to, go into where you, you just model everything together. Great option. Plate carriers, amazing. Like the JPC is durable. Yeah, I've been running mine for years now. Um, it fills, it can fill more than one roll. It can be low profile. It can be, Pretty overt. Um, what I do want to upgrade at some point, but just been focusing on a lot of other things and plate carriers. To be honest, have kind of fell out of fashion. Yeah. But uh, they make legit load bearing plate carriers that are designed to hold a lot of weight. One of which is the SPC. Uh, that's kind of like their air light looking plate carrier. So the one that's got all the yeah the ball yeah light cut into it. So what they actually do with their their uh, cummerbunds is they actually design part of their. It's like a two piece cummerbund. Um, part of it goes on the inside of the plate, part of it goes on the outside of the plate. And the, the idea behind that is it keeps the plate off your chest so you can actually breathe. Hmm. Yeah. Great idea. No, um, and they do I, have a, what's that? I was actually issued, I was issued, a, an AVS, um, is it adaptive vest system? Either way, it's, it's their next step up plate here. I was issued that in the army. Great. Very comfortable. Like that uh. thing just to, to set that thing out, you're talking like 800,000 bucks. So. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's just a bunch of pieces that you put together. It's all modular. But what were you going to say? Uh, oh, yes. They they make a lot of other, like, random little things, too. Like their, uh, like, the little pocket ghillie. Um, solid little piece of kit. Yep. You know what I mean? Just, like, little random things. Like, they don't get... What I appreciate about them, too, is that they don't get, like, money hungry about, like, random inventions and stuff. At least from what I've seen of them over the years, it's like... They could, they're completely fine with not inventing something new for like 10 years, and then they'll just drop a couple things. Oh, like, yeah. Nah, we thought of this. I hope you guys like it. Like, other than that, they don't, they don't get crazy. They don't over, they don't even really over market themselves. If, if marketing themselves, people, other people market for yes. them. Yes. Like, Cry doesn't go out of its way to market anything. I think a good, um, good part of that is probably majority of their money is made through government contracts. That's the big thing right there is they're a big, yeah. they're a big contract company. It's just yeah. what they are. And, and a lot, all their stuff's made in the U S cause it's very compliant too. So it's kind of, yeah. kind of cool. Made in uh, Brooklyn, New York yep. in an old shipyard. Yeah. It's pretty cool. An and, actual like shipyard where they built boats in World War II. Yeah. So. <sighs> and so it's, um, yeah, it's quite neat. Um, just they're very, uh, yeah, they're kind of just very butter toast. You know, they're just, you know, you're not going to be mad at what you buy from them. Like they're not going to have, like, they have just good stuff. Like it's simple. Like yeah. it's very straightforward. And so, anyways, we've probably beat that horse, beat that dead horse enough. So, anyways, number two is a tie, um, and that's because yeah. Jake and I equally like these companies just as much. Um, so, like, I favor one, Jake favors the other. So, yeah. I favor Spiritus. Jake's more of a Haley fan. Yeah. Uh, so, I think Haley's. They've been at the chess rig game for a minute. Like quite a while. Yeah, they have been. I, it, and and really, again, like I really like what Spiritus pumps out. Um, but like I've just had more experience with Haley, and yep. so like I just have really liked. I loved my DC three R or D three CRX. Uh, my D three CRM is killer as well. Um, but I do run a Spiritus harness on that on that Haley rig. Yeah. So on my on my uh, Spiritus thing too as yep. well. So. The cool thing is that these two companies, although they invent stuff that's like kind of uh, neck and neck with each other, they're very interchangeable and they don't make it a point to like, you know, mess with that. Like it's, 
you can you can run like half of these guys make parts for like the other guys like kits yeah. and stuff and and they all just they're all just kind of sucking off the tea to cry but like like in reality like in all in regards to kind of like what they make it's all interchangeable with pretty much everybody yeah like yeah there's a i couple, guess is the is the big there's thing there's a couple exceptions but generally speaking like a chest rig from spiritus will work on a haley plate carrier and vice versa yes um so like haley now has plate carriers spiritus has had plate carriers for a while i i bought a spiritus mark IV chest rig I've been running that for almost as long as i've been running my jpc um i really like it uh spiritus is one of those companies where they every time they come out with a new product it's like a banger and yeah they it, have a hell of a cult following yes and unfortunately a couple of years ago this was probably this might have been pre-pandemic or right around pandemic they ran into a lot of uh supply issues mm -hmm. so they almost turned into like a drop culture which they got a lot of flack for because every time they would drop something it would just sell right out it got ridiculous i yes. remember that like to be like fifty thousand units gone in now like two minutes they're pretty good now they're pretty steady mm -hmm. um I think they've really done good expanding in yeah. the last couple of years. And they, they got a really good product designer over there. Like just like I said, the stuff they come out with is really good. And the problem with that is they're constantly innovating and upgrading their stuff. So you kind of get caught with your pants down sometimes where you're like, I just bought this and now they're coming out with an update. Yeah. It's like, come on. Cause like their uh, Mark five chest rig. So the updated version of what I have more, it's even more modular. So mm -hmm. instead of having that, uh, it's kind of like the Haley idea where the Mark IV was you have your mags in the back and then you got a spot in the front to either hold more mags or utility or whatever. The problem is you can't take those off on the older designs. On the new Spiritus Mark V design, you can uh, take that off. It's a molly panel or you can molly on an admin panel. Mm. So that way you got everything. Makes so you, sense. Yeah. You can run six mags out of it. You can run all kinds of other stuff up, up front. Yeah. But, um, Spiritus, um, I, I think the main product that we both can agree on is, is the, the thing too. Like this thing is killer. Yeah. You really expand your uh, your micro chest rig into something that's actually a fighting platform. Yeah, without a doubt. And I just, yeah, I just, um, for me, when it comes to Haley, <sighs> I've had really good luck with them. Um, I like their marketing. I like who they are as people. Um, not to say that I don't like Spiritus in that manner. I just, um, I'm aware more of like Haley kind of in their background and stuff and yeah, I've just I've, I've I've really enjoyed it when they came out with a. They were one of the first ones to really drop the M eighty one line, like really yep. get it pushed out. And um, at the time, I had just bought all my Kyle stuff, so I didn't think much of it. Yeah. And then I like over time, like I need that, and so it took me a while hunting. So it's kind of been like like that for me, I guess. But which has been good. I do uh, I do really enjoy my Haley equipment. My flat pack is great too. I yep. love my flat pack. Um, yeah, and I mean they're still coming out with stuff. They just collabed with Grand Thumb with his Onward Research Onward, Company. Yeah. Uh, to come out with they have new placards for uh it could work as a chest rig primarily for plate carriers they're coming out with new versions of their flat pack um yeah haley uh haley definitely they kind of pioneered the whole like um kydex retention with your magazines yeah um, for chest rigs yes yeah. They, yeah they got really big with that too uh, um but yeah just in general um and Haley really was, they weren't necessarily the first, but they were the first one I really got into that was really about like modularity between between all their different systems. Yeah. You know what I mean? Being able to clip this into that or clip it into this or that or so on and so forth. Like it um, it really expanded. I think they definitely had a big part. Like you can wear your flat pack as a harness. It, precisely. Yeah. Um, which is great. Yeah. Um, and it's just a lot of little details that are like super. But so that's kind of our... Um, our number two there, like that's um two and three, yeah, it's kind of two I, and three. I would know? agree. I don't have a lot of experience with Haley, but I would agree that their products are are very good, and you you're not going to go wrong by acquiring them. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing with um Spiritus and Haley is like we're both pretty much between two and three. One of us, we just both have the kind of the opposite ends of it. Um, I think they're yeah, I think the. Those are great options, but we are going to do some uh, some others here that, that I, I wouldn't I don't want to call them honorable mentions because it's not like they made the cut. It's just that some of this stuff um, they might not do all of that kind of equipment, but there's a lot of equipment there for the taking that like um, that is killer. Like yeah. you're not going to necessarily go wrong buying from them, but like 
Versus a place like Haley or Spiritus or Cry, like you can pretty much get everything from those companies. Yeah. It's kind of so. And we may have limited to no personal experience with some of these brands. Yeah, uh, but we know that what they put out is decent. So yeah. So first of all, it's Paraz. Um, I have a Paraz LPS PC, and um, things honestly pretty good. Um, pretty solid. Um, it took a while to get there because it was on back order, but um, it was very reasonably priced and. Um, uh, basically a lot of it's like kind of custom work, you know, like a good portion of what Peraz does is all custom, um, made to order, made to order, yeah. or you can, I believe you can call in and try to get certain things like crafted or whatever, but essentially, yeah, it's all made to order. So it takes a minute, yep. but in my opinion, it's worth it. I got to play care exactly what I wanted. Six so, months later. Yeah. Like six to seven months later, yeah. but Hey, can't complain. I'm good to go. Um, and then, of course, next is going to come up is our, our boys <clears throat> over at Edgar Sherman Designs. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, so ESD, they fit into the nylon. Um, we have large experience with their slings, uh, which I guess is something we didn't mention. I don't think Cry makes a sling, but Haley makes a sling. Um, ESD, for sure, their number one thing that we can recommend is their sling. They just got into dump pouches, the sap bucket. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, which we talked about when we went over and saw them. Cool that they finally got that on the market. I really want one. Um, but the unfortunate thing is they're not in Coyote or M81 for Jake yet. So uh, yeah. we will be waiting on that. Um, and once we'll those get there. do come out, yeah. Because made in New Hampshire, designed in New Hampshire. Yeah. Um, they got the whole like maple syrup vibes going on. Yeah, fuck yeah. No, yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, so you can't really go wrong with ESD nylon stuff. Um, I think they, they have some other stuff coming in the future here um so keep an eye on them shoot yeah um now um next is going to be s tac but that's more of something you have a lot you have more experience with than me, with than me so i'll let you speak on behalf yeah. of that a little bit i mean more. we both run s tacks on our belts true um so rifle and handgun pouches they are like yeah they're they're solid i mean um that's that's kind of my extent of my experience with s tac i don't know if you've had much more than that that's, as well that's the majority of what they do but yeah, so honestly, within that like realm, I've had super luck with them. Um, yeah, they're just they're straightforward. Um, yeah. I, I I'm not as aware of a lot of their other like if they have any other products or anything. You're saying kind of they don't really. It's like that's mainly their it's, bread and butter. It's mostly just uh, magazine pouches for different platforms. Uh, what I like about them is they're just very minimalistic and they have great retention based on the Kydex industry. So they're for those of you that might not know, they're a nylon blend with Kydex. Um, you can get a little bit of variation on them. Like you can get different heights. So how much of the magazine they cover. You can mm -hmm. get like a uh, single pistol, double pistol, single rifle, double pistol. You can get like kangaroo ones that have rifles and then pistols on top of the rifles. Um, you can get some with Molly on the front. But at the end of the day, it's essentially a, a pouch that holds your, your rifle or handgun mags. Um, I think they work best on belts because on a plate care placard or something, they get a little bulky yeah. if you go prone. So that's kind of the thing there. But Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, the next is our friend over at Shepherd Association. Yeah. yeah. Association. <laughs> just like oh, the man. podcast. Dude, I just can't. I just can't. I don't know what it is about your name. Old man. Sam at Shepherd Associated. Dude, poor, poor Sam, dude. Yeah. Like I just, every time I try to say Shepherd Associated, the first time I do it, it's just... It's just a mess, you know? Yeah. I mean, Sam's a really cool guy. Uh, made in Maine. He's yeah, a uh, great podcast we had with a him. A great tailor. Um, like, he'll essentially, if you guys have an idea, send it to him. Like, that's kind of a really cool thing about him. Um, at the moment, if you have an idea, send it over to him, and he'll figure out a way to, to put it together. Yes, uh, yeah. Which is what he did for me. So I have a pouch that I'm testing out on my thing, too, to increase the magazine capacity and also hold a water bottle so he's got a bunch of cool products um he gets out there and actually tests his stuff too in cold weather so he's got a lot of uh a lot of his design stuff is kind of around does this work in really cold weather because that's like where we live that's worst case scenario yeah that's like you know if <laughs> this is gonna be stalingrad like straight yeah. up um like he doesn't like velcro for the most part um, he does certain things with his zippers. Mm -hmm. There's just certain things that he does. Um, yeah, which is pretty cool. It's a it's a really neat um, and very relatable 
kind of train of thought yep. that he uses to kind of come to the conclusion he conclusions conclusions he has. And he goes beyond just like gun stuff because you can get like axe holders from him. Uh, yeah, there's various other kind of outdoorsy products that he can do. Yeah, so. most definitely. And I gotta get on and make a couple of orders. I'd like to get the um, the axe holder. And uh, I'm trying to when I start to set up a new bag and set up, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm I, looking through that. You also um, let, let me know what color you want it because he does. So how Sam does stuff is he does it in batches. Okay. So yeah. like when he designed this pouch for me, he did it with everything else he was doing at the time with Coyote. Gotcha. So he just does stuff by color, so that way he gets the fabric out, does everything he needs with that color, and then moves on to the next one. Well, so, yeah. Next time he has an M81 batch. That's so I told him that you want um, something like this when M81 comes out. Uh, yeah. So he'll be on that, but I awesome. don't know. Depending on your bag color, I don't know what you want for the axe holder, but yeah, I'll I'll probably if I could get an OD bag, I'd probably just do that and get yeah. you know axe holder that's M eighty one. But regardless, um, next is gonna be Axel. Now Axel is pretty solid. Um, they started from what I remember, they started like making solutions for other people's problems. Pretty much, like my introduction to Axel and my my experience with Axel oh, is yeah. The cry, um, the Gen here. One, yeah, the Gen One uh, conversion, like JPC conversion, yep. Yep. over to running a placard. Yep, and um, worked great, especially for retrofitting to an older plate carrier. And yep. I did a little bit of modification eventually, but even when it was in its organic state, it worked pretty damn well. Yep, um, and essentially just um, yeah, they were just again kind of like um, kind of like when we talked with Edgar Sherman and the design team there. Um, it's kind of like they just. They see a problem, and they solve it, and it might be a problem between two companies that have nothing to do with them, like it, it, kind of on on Axel's end of it, um, and they're, they're just going to uh, they're just going to create a solution for that. They're, they're designers, you know what I mean? It's just what they do. Yeah, they, they're problem solvers, and so it's pretty cool because like that's that that's the kind of um, companies that really kind of shine within this community at this point in this kind of oversaturated community. Um, yeah, I, I think most notably nowadays, they'd probably be known for their zipper pouches. So they make zipper inserts for Velcro pouches. So if you want to, say, eliminate the Velcro uh, flaps on pouches, because I know they kind of solve the spiritist problem that some guys had, because Velcro is loud, like we just talked about in the winter, it doesn't work well. Yeah. Uh, so they came out with these zippered pouches, so you can just forego the Velcro on it, have a little zipper opening, it's more quiet, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then they've expanded. They even have a belt now. I don't. I don't know if you knew that, but hmm. they have their own belt. So I did not know that. I haven't seen much of their expansion. Yeah, I've just known their kind of accessory line. You know, like the random stuff that likes. Like, oh man, they make it perfect. Yeah, you know? yeah. They definitely have some cool stuff. Um, nice. Yeah, definitely some cool engineering going on there. Yeah, should uh, So this next one, I have zero experience with, but they've been putting out some really good content recently, and and. Um, I actually, so it's Shaw Concepts is what they're called. And they just came out, uh, they have this uh, kit that they were talking about on a video. So they're really big on like guys just taking what they have and retrofitting it. So one of one of the products that they're, I think, going to come out with pretty soon is a retrofit kit for like old issued mag pouches and like GP pouches. Ooh. So essentially it's just going to be um, shot cord and... Um, Depending on how the flap works, there might be some Velcro deletion. Um, but what essentially taking a old issue GI like Double like a. Molly, say Molly two like GP pouch, mm -hmm. and just wrapping shot cord around it, um, and doing some other stuff with it, um, essentially making it more usable in today's environment. Because hmm. um, some of those pouches are shaped kind of weird for some of the equipment we run nowadays. Yeah, they also make some stuff like bandoliers. They have like a modern bandolier that roll, rolls up real small with six mags pretty cool um i like i said don't have any experience but they do placards they do all that kind of stuff so they're they're kind of like a lot of these other companies they just have a different different twist on it yeah i can dig it um then finally is uh feral concepts and uh for me personally i don't really have any experience with pharaoh yeah. um I, I have secondhand experience with pharaoh yeah. like i know a lot of people who run pharaoh's equipment and they love it I mean, they seem to be perfectly happy with what they own. Um, there's, I mean, in fact, there's like, again, it's one of those ones that does has a total like cult following. Like 
Pharaoh and um, Spiritus both have kind of like that very yeah like the I don't know how to explain it kind of like yeah it's always like the goon squad that really is into that like, Pharaoh is I would say very much that kind of vibe yeah like, the whole like goon thing which sometimes is to me I don't really I think it's a little overplayed on Pharaoh's end I think Spiritus does a good job at not being like too over the top yeah, that's fair that's it, fair they're a little more in your face at they Pharaoh. mix in like Spiritus mix in, mixes in good information it's not all just flashy like yeah. Like, Pharaoh's very much like, oh, I skate, and I'm a shooter, and, like, they fit that whole, like, goon kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, for uh, sure. But, I mean, we got a, we got a friend, uh, Wesley, been on the podcast. He loves his Pharaoh put care. Um, so, I mean, there's that. And I run their mini dangler pouch, which works great. Um, enough to hold a basic IFAC, and that's what I use it for. So, yeah. super basic there. Um, one other I just thought of for a company, uh, Tracer Tactical. They're kind of going around the social media networks right now. Uh, I believe it's a one-man show, and he makes he makes like a beefed-up chest rig that you can fit a bunch of mags on. Uh, again, modularity. That's kind of where the market's going at the moment. Um, another one, uh, old classic, would be like your Mayflower or Velocity Systems. Yeah, that's true. They have their old uh, old chest rigs that are still kicking around, and they've been they've been going for a long time. Yeah, I mean, uh, what is it, Extreme Gear Labs? They're kind of the OGs of the game. Um, yeah, EGL. They're, yeah. I'm pretty sure they had a big part in the d- design of the all the Haley series. Okay, like the D3, the disruptive whatever environment systems uh, setups. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, they'll actually custom make you pretty much any equipment. You yeah, because he's like a designer mostly, right? Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Just something to think about. Um, I follow I follow him on Instagram for like a long time. Like it's just, uh, for some reason, just earlier on, like I just followed him and like I don't know. I think he's just a lesser known like entity that's very influential in the community. Um, Tactical Taylor, yeah, Tactical Taylor is a great classic, and they they've managed to keep up with the times and make their stuff's affordable too. Like their general, like if you just need like a M4 pouch, it's like nothing special like 20 bucks yeah like they're not charging you like 50 bucks for a double mag pouch or anything i was gonna say because i think they used to be rather expensive maybe yeah um and then what do you got london bridge tactical is not that a thing i haven't heard like anything i remember lbt used to be like the thing back when everybody wanted to be a seal like in, oh okay yeah was this around probably when osama bin Laden was shot and all the airsofters like wanted to be yeah probably seal team six or something probably everybody because at one point in time, the seal, like, standard issue plate carrier was an LBT and then some, like, numbers. Um, I haven't heard much of them recently. I don't know if they've kept up with the times too well. Yeah, I don't know. To be honest. Uh, I mean, we mostly focus this conversation on tactical equipment, but, I mean, we could honorably mention, uh, like, Mystery Ranch. I love their backpacks. Um, I, th- I think this kind of goes to show you guys that there's an almost endless list of just nylon companies that make something Um, yeah for sure something related to the space we're in so at the end of the day um this is a pretty good list um to reference if you guys want any like specific situation or uh, suggestions on some of these brands we'd be more than welcome to offer those yeah Um, if you want to hear maybe some certain um specifics on some of these products we mentioned let us know stuff that we own um Otherwise, we can give you recommendations or point you in the right direction for people that might have that information. Uh, anything else to add? No, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, yeah, kind of a short, sweet, and to the point episode, but um, it's something that I was just thinking, I know a lot of people, when they get into the nylon gear world, um, they get a little bit lost because there's, there's just so much. I mean, there's just so many different companies you can order from. There's so many different people. Um, and there's a lot of hype, too. There's a lot of hype, and it, it can get really confusing really quick. And stuff you see in stores, you know, depending on the store, you could walk in and it could be just a, just a friggin', just a prison of condor stuff everywhere. Voodoo or it could Tactical, like, do you yeah, remember that oh one? Oh my god, Voodoo Tactical, I forgot about that one. <laughs> um, yeah, like, that's the thing. I was like, just thinking about walking into army barracks. <laughs> yeah, or was it, was there, there was a mil- the military base, was it U.S. Patriot Tactical or something? What was the military base, like the ones that were always on like a military base or like right off of it? The tactical stores and it always oh, have like just yeah. poop in yeah. there. Like it was always just shit. 
Did um, you have certain shops that you weren't allowed to shop at? Because they, like, screwed over soldiers or something? Mm, kind of. Or, like, sold fake equipment to soldiers or something? Well, we had, so, uh, off of uh, Fort Carson, we had G.I. Jose. Yeah. And that was all just stolen stuff. Um, yeah, there was this really slow guy who used to work on Thursdays, though. Because they didn't have any, it, it was great. Because, like, they didn't have price tags. Like, a little story time here. But, um, so, like, they didn't have price tags. They just need to bring it up and be like, ah, 20 bucks, right? Yeah. It was this one guy, and, you know... Full disclosure. Maybe I, maybe I took advantage of him. I don't know. But, like, um, he straight up, like, he just wasn't all there, I don't think. And, like, listen, like, if his, if, if, if the kind of, the ones who were all there were there, they'd charge you, like, 60 bucks. They'd charge you, like, $5, man. Was this for your medical bag? Yeah, I day? got that medical bag there, yeah. And yeah. I got, I got that interceptor vest there. Um, Fort Benning had. Just an obnoxious amount of things. Fort Even, Benning had commandos. Okay, yeah, and I remember they, Commandos. They had the main store that was like all the new stuff. Mm-hmm. And then they had the side store that was like their their uh, consignment store. Okay. Which a lot of that was similar. Yeah, pretty much. And, and I mean, that was the thing. It's like G.I. Jose. I mean, you're talking, you'd walk in there and there was just stacks of IOTVs. Yeah. Like stacks of like brand new like Gen 4 IOTVs. Brand new at the time, Gen 4. I remember when, when it was time, it was... Like, your time to try to clear CIF and you didn't have an item. They'd be like, oh, go go check Commandos. Dude, straight. <laughs> like, so bad. Go see if there's one there you can, like, say That's yours. what I did. I, most of my CIF was sourced, like, back from G.I. Jose. <laughs> like, yeah. And it was so funny because it was painted up just like G.I.J. It was like, G.I. Jose. Like, and they had a van. And it's the, yeah. the, you see the van going down, like, I-25. And it would be like, G.I. Jose. Like, yep. with the, the stripe and everything. It was amazing. Um but yeah, you could get some cool stuff there. Some stuff you've never seen. Because those guys have been in the stolen CIF game since like... For like 20 like, years or more. Since like the late 80s. <laughs> and so like you see some cool shit in there. Yeah. Like you see literally like just old things that you knew were brought in there when they were still like being used, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, oh, it was just kind of cool. Um, one of those weird things that you just get to like experience during a military base that you don't get to see in a lot of other places. Yeah, one of those unique so. experiences. Yeah, I think we mentioned on the podcast before too. Is like if you yeah. really need like random mass amounts of like just army goods, just yeah. go to a army navy store right outside a base because yeah. like you know some private yeah, sold they're, that. They're stacked. Yeah. Like I don't have to worry about that for another three years. You know, yeah, I need like money to pay it. my twenty uh, percent APR on my new Mustang. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Or like yeah, pretty much. And so, but nonetheless. Um, yeah, that's that. Anyways, I guess Jared can give you his spiel. Yeah, like we said, kind of a reference list of uh, different companies. So if you guys uh, like what you heard, be sure to follow us on social media. We're on all the major platforms. Facebook's going to be NH2A. Instagram is NH underscore 28 underscore. We have a Gmail if you guys want to email us questions, comments, or concerns. NH2A podcast at gmail.com. We also have a YouTube. So all of our podcasts get uploaded to YouTube. At the moment, it's just audio versions, but on YouTube. So if you guys prefer the YouTube format, then you can go listen to us over there. That's NHUA. And finally, we have a Patreon. So we'd appreciate any support you guys would be willing to give us. All that money goes right back into the podcast and does not line our pockets. Yeah, for sure. My turn. First of all, be proficient, guys. Get out there, shoot. Um, Happens to the best of us. We get caught up in life. We don't get to shoot as much as we want to. We get a little bit rusty, whatever. Um, Biggest thing is to get out there. If you don't know what you're doing, find somebody who does, shoot with them. If you do know what you're doing, keep shooting. Find some people who don't know what they're doing and try to help them out. Um, it's as simple as that. You know, We got, like we've mentioned a million times before now, Mac, Specialized Training Solutions. Shooting with Mac at gmail.com. Hit them up. Um, same thing with our friend Trevor Morse. Um, you can hit him up at NH Arm Citizen. Um, next of all, be politically active. Same thing. Get out there, write those letters, send those emails, make those phone calls. Share good content that actually makes sense and is researched a little bit online. And uh, don't get in violent arguments with people because they're just going to think you're a dick. And that leads right into number three, which is be polite, right? The third P. Um, be a good person, kind of person the gun community wants to have you as a part of, kind of person that your regular, just regular ass community wants to have you as a part of. Just, um, yeah, just be a good person. And um, that's about it, guys. So we'll see you for 139. Take care.